day more enjoyable. I feel like it's different too with this movie that this is the, it's just, I'm so over. So to paint the little sprinkles that I have on here, I just use a toothpick. That'll be 
pairs seems to work really well. I do nine pairs with sprinkles. I did a poll on Instagram if people like the ones with sprinkles or without sprinkles. And sprinkles won, but there were definitely some no sprinkles option. And I'm kind of torn, honestly. <laughs> I'll just make a little over half of them with sprinkles. And then I guess if I don't sell all of the no sprinkles ones, I can just always add sprinkles after. <laughs> Okay, it's like three days later, and I finally finished these double scoop ice cream dangles. They took me longer than any other dangles because I decided to paint the sides and the back, basically the entire piece, so that it almost wouldn't look like wood anymore. And it kind of looks like polymer clay, but I don't do this for all of my dangles, but it just looked really clean for this type of dangle. So these are all of my sprinkle ones and these are the ones without sprinkles. So the original sprinkle ice cream cone dangles that I did, I kind of had a more golden yellowish cone and I didn't really like it because I didn't think it went well with the other colors so I changed it slightly and I mixed my own so I'm gonna have to take new pictures so I'm gonna assemble one of these and I don't have a picture of the ones without the sprinkles so I'm gonna assemble this and take pictures because the update is in about an hour <laughs> so I need to take that edit and get ready for the update to assemble these, I'm using all stainless steel as always. I have like this fancy French hook that doesn't have the little coil on it. And I'm gonna use six millimeter hoops to join the dangly parts, a five millimeter, um, not hoops, jump rings, a five millimeter jump ring for the top. And then to attach the French hook to this jump ring, I'm using a tiny four millimeter jump ring. So let me attach those real quick. By the time you're watching this, I don't know if there will be any left. But I always announce my shop updates and show what I'm working on on my Instagram. So my potty mouth Instagram is potty mouth jewelry. And then I recently made a kind of more personal Instagram or a more general crafting Instagram at Tana Makes. So that if you don't want to see any swear words, then you don't have to follow me on potty mouth. And I only have like 200 followers over there, so I'm waiting until I get a few more, but I do show some stories and do polls about studio vlogs or like things that I'm working on. So follow one or the other or follow both. These were my dangles for summer. Ever since I made the Halloween dangles, um, I kind of got this expectation from followers and viewers to make dangles for every season or holiday so <laughs> that's what I've been doing so I made Halloween dangles I made Christmas dangles I made dangles for Valentine's Day I did dangles for spring slash early summer which were like the flower dangles and then these are my real summer dangles and then after these I'll be back to making Halloween dangles. 
I think my Halloween dangles were the most popular. So I definitely want to make a lot of those and they were pre-order last year so I want to try to make a bunch before pre- or make a bunch instead of doing pre-orders because I feel like a lot of people don't like pre-orders like they just want to buy something and get it right away and then maybe come up with a few other designs in case a lot of people already have the ones from last year. I'm pretty torn on if I like the sprinkles or the plain better. In real life, I hate sprinkles. They're cute. And obviously when you're painting stuff, it makes stuff look cute, but they don't do anything for me. <laughs> I just kind of like how minimal these look. They're kind of far. These little four millimeter jump rings are annoying because they're like all intertwined and I have to separate them. Oh, I got so lucky that it didn't fall. Oh, I just chipped my table. But I got lucky that it didn't fall on the earrings. Oh my god, where the fuck did that go? It's away from now. Every time I lean over the table, my belly's like <laughs> smushed in. It looks funny. So cute. Okay, I'm gonna go take pictures now and edit them and put them on the website because I have probably like half an hour before the launch but I, I doubt I'll be sold out of everything um, I'll have all of my usual hand stamped necklaces restocked my vertical bar necklaces restocked a few mugs restocked like the sublimation mugs and of course I have the stickers and the main thing are just these dangles that are limited edition just for the summer but go check it out it's on pottymouthjewelry.com all right so i shot photos of the dangles and i updated the website so now i just need to package some orders that i didn't get to package this morning because i was prepping for the update but i just have a few necklaces bracelet and these cute moon face dangles and these are just orders that i still get through my etsy I have kind of a funny story. So I was trying to post one reel a day for 30 days because my friend Sarah from Not So Design Co. started a challenge and I remember she did it back in like, I don't know, October, November, December, and she gained a ton of followers. I think she has over 30,000 followers now. And so I wanted to try it out, but it happened to be around when Instagram announced that they were prioritizing videos and reels. So 
I tried it out anyways and I did it for about eight days and I didn't really see that many more views doing it daily. I think the views actually kind of dropped <laughs> and it's probably just because Instagram happened to announce that they were prioritizing reels so maybe a bunch of people were starting to post reels and things were getting... I forgot the phrase. They were like getting drowned out, whatever that phrase is, I forgot. But anyways, <laughs> some of the reels I would edit in TikTok first because I wanted to use like that Siri voice and I don't think Reels has that option, but on TikTok you can do text to speech to get that Siri voice. So the first one that I decided to make with the Siri voice was one where I was sharing like my plastic free packaging and I posted it on my reels and I just posted it on TikTok anyway since I made it on TikTok and it did alright on Instagram but it randomly blew up on TikTok and it got over a hundred thousand views and I'm just sharing the plastic free packaging and showing that everything is paper based and I titled it like what I wish I knew or what I wish I started with with my business or something like that and it's just crazy like how toxic TikTok is because the amount of like lack of a better word dumb comments <laughs> of people are like oh but you're killing trees or or what's the point like if people are just gonna throw it away and not recycle it yada yada but I mean the ones that would annoy me were mainly like why are you cutting down trees or like plastic is better and it's like people just comment without knowing what they're talking about or without researching because the majority of the stuff that I showed are things from eco enclosed that are made with 100% recycled content meaning that I'm, I'm not cutting down new trees to make all of my packaging <laughs> like it's made from paper that was already existing from trees that were already cut down but anyways it just surprised me how many toxic comments I got on that of course like there was a ton of likes and a ton of people that said thank you but I just didn't really expect any negativity at all towards something like that. And that just goes to show that even if content like that gets mean and toxic comments, that probably a bunch of videos get mean and toxic comments regardless of what they are. And just wanted to remind you guys to not let people like that discourage you and that people just really like trolling on there so I would feel really bad if someone stopped doing their business altogether just because they're posting the things that they're making or packaging and then they're getting mean comments from people on TikTok like either ignore them or block them or report them delete the comments and just keep doing you and do your own research and do what makes you happy like, I actually stopped posting reels for a few days because I got overwhelmed by by all of the comments on that TikTok and responding to people and then my parents visited too so I kind of forgot but it's just crazy how overwhelming it can be and if you need to take a break then take a break like prioritize your mental health and take care of yourself do what's best for you but anyways that's just a random little story I'm still gonna share some more plastic free packaging tips and recyclable packaging tips for people because that TikTok got hundreds of shares so I'm assuming it's people sharing it with other small business owners and I'm not gonna let some mean comments stop me from sharing what I know is best for the environment and if you guys are wondering about some of the packaging that I use I believe studio vlog 7 
goes over all of my packaging and also the my packaging station tour I basically go over everything in there as well so if you want to use some plastic free packaging and packaging that's used from 100% recycled materials not <laughs> materials that are cutting down trees <laughs> then just go check those out Anyways, let me finish packaging these. I'll probably do a little time lapse. Alright, I'm done with the orders and I actually got an email from the studio that I took my pottery classes at saying that I have some pieces ready so I'm gonna go drop these off at the post office and then head over there and pick up my pieces and maybe I'll show them to you guys if they turned out alright. <laughs> Alright, I'm back from the post office and the studio and I'm really excited because there's some cool pieces in here. <laughs> couple of them didn't turn out but I think I'm on to something so the piece that I didn't think was going to work ended up looking awesome so I was worried about this one because I put vinyl on I put removable vinyl on the mug before I glazed it and when you dip into glaze, the glaze coating is pretty thick. So when I peeled off the vinyl, some of the details were chipping off, like the insides of the A, the insides of the M, and like around the S and the T's and the S and the H. So I had to go back in with a paintbrush and dip it in the dip glaze and just paint in the areas that was missing the glaze. And I just thought it wouldn't look consistent, but it turned out so good. I'm super excited about this. Unfortunately, I guess whoever was removing stuff from the kiln or putting it back on the shelves or maybe when people were just picking up their stuff, um, it got chipped. But it's on the rim, so technically you can still use it if your drink's on the inside, obviously. So I'm super excited how this turned out. I'm gonna make a bunch more like this. And this is how I'll incorporate the potty mouth phrases into the potty mouth brand so then it doesn't seem too random that I'm gonna start selling ceramics and pottery <laughs> through potty mouth so when this when this chipped um before it was fired i thought it wasn't going to work out so my teacher recommended using underglaze, which is just glaze that you basically paint on like normal paint and she recommended sponging it on over the vinyl letters but as you can see there's bits that are kind of missing the underglaze, so that means that I just didn't pack on the underglaze that well. And I think if I do a thicker coating of underglaze, then maybe you can see these letters better. But then while looking at these two, I also realized that the letters that don't have any glaze at all came out m much darker than the letters that had the clear coat after because after I put these three colors of underglaze I coated everything with clear coat because the underglaze is not glossy so pink this darker pink might not work out to see the letterings but I'll just experiment with some colors I actually went to 
Clayworks, which is like a pottery supply store yesterday and buy a bunch of underglazes. So I'll just experiment with this. But I do really like the ombre effect. So I hope I can perfect this look. This one's a mug I was just experimenting with and I just carved out lines all the way around and it looks really cool. It looks like kind of like Roman-ish, like, I don't know, like a Colosseum or pillars or something. So it looks really cool. This one, this funky looking one is one that when I was trying to remove it from the wheel, I accidentally hit one of the edges of the rim. So I was about to throw it away, <laughs> or not throw it away, but recycle the clay. And I was like, let me just like pinch it and just make some abstract shape. And then after that, since I thought it looked funny like this, I was like, okay, let's take it a step further and carve out some designs. So I just did that all the way around. And I'm happy that I ended up not just throwing it with the recycled clay because I think it looks really cool and I'll just use it as a pot for a plant and yeah it looks really unique I like it a lot this one was another sage and white combo that you guys really liked and I tried to make it a little more drippy because uh, the glazes at the studio they don't seem like they really drip much or I need to figure out a way to to apply it so that it drips more but I'm not sure what happened on this side because there's parts that have no glaze so I don't know if I accidentally got wax on the piece while I was waxing the bottom so maybe that's what happened but it doesn't seem like any wax got on the inside so it's definitely still food safe but it just would have been nice <laughs> if it came out fully glazed but this side looks cool And then my last one, which is like my biggest mug yet. Nick makes fun of me because they're like so short and stout. I need to practice <laughs> throwing bigger mugs or just throwing with more clay. But this one's just a little daisy one. So I just dipped part of the top and then I dipped the handle. And then I painted on these little daisies with underglaze. And then coated them with clear glaze so that they would be shiny. And it's funny, my teacher said that these little flowers look like eggs, <laughs> so they're like egg flowers, but I really like how this turned out. Super cute. So if you saw my first mugs that I brought in, uh, those were all basically just coated in, in glazes and nothing really unique. So you can definitely tell that, the, <laughs> that with this batch, I was really trying to experiment, so. That's the only way you can find your style and figure out what works. So let me know what your favorite is.